Welcome everyone to our episode 26 of the section Drops of Wisdom. In today's episode, we are going to talk about the book Creating a Space or Create Space by Derek Draper. We are going to start the journey of knowing how much power gives you to reflect on your life, to start doing the things that you already know that you should be doing, but having more awareness of your life and having more space to see it from the observer point of view and knowing what are you repeating, what are you making the same mistakes or staying away from those toxic stimuli, people, energy, places and envision a new life that you can design the moment you commit with yourself and start having more time to reflect. So few individuals take the time to witness their lives becoming the observer, creating a space to detach from the emotional turmoil and negativity that everywhere in the world is being lived right now or being broadcast, not being lived, being broadcast and be more objective developing the imagination pathway that your brain is able to give you and using those moments of reflection to purposefully creating the life that you want. If you want to be good at what you do, you need self-awareness. You need to know what is your next move, how to approach your life from a more productive and not from a more busy place. Knowing your own strengths and weaknesses is a fantastic advantage to scale up your abilities. Whether you are an artist, whether you are the CFO of a corporation or an administrative assistant, with self-awareness you'll be in a better position to avoid potential problems, create more effective plans and make better decisions. If we just have time for ourselves, we really would live much, much better and we would be able to design and really create our lives from this perspective of an observer. The main quote of the book is the key to knowing yourself is reflection or what people call sometimes having a meaningful conversation with oneself. For example, it can greatly boost your decision-making abilities and reduce mistakes. Before taking an action, you should take time to reflect on possible side effects and any alternative options. Then, after taking action, you should analyze the results and identify what went right or what went wrong. Doing this regularly will guarantee that you'll make fewer mistakes. So if you just analyze your life every week, let's say, that's like a wishful thinking in terms of how how many you how many um wisdom bites you would have by doing it weekly. But let's say that you do it once a month. If you analyze your life once a month you will have a lot of breakthroughs about what did you do, how did you advance, what mistakes, what distractions, what stimuli, what books, what things were you involved and engaged with. So all of that information just comes with the time that you take to reflect. But for deep and meaningful reflection to happen, you need space. In fact, you need four kinds of space temporal, physical, relational, and psychic. Temporal and physical space are time and location, respectively. Relational space refers to the benefit of having someone else to bounce ideas off, and psychic space is about being open to improvement and feeding your mind with new and enlightening information. Reading, not just witnessing the scrolling of um, Instagram or many other platforms. 
engaging in those social platforms, what is going to uh, trigger and prime is your reactive mind and it's going to lead you to feel um, unworthy compare and a lot of emotions that are going to lead you in those toxic cycles creating all this space to reflect takes effort of course according to a study of harvard university ceos typically have less than 15 percent of their work week available for solitary work and if ceos can make a space for reflection it's probably not much easier for the rest of the workplace or workforce. Reflecting on past actions might lead you to discover that you behaved foolishly in the last meeting or that you treated your assistant in an un inconsiderate manner. Nevertheless, if you want the benefits of self-awareness, you need to acknowledge these unpleasant realities. It's like um filming um, uh, a series from any of the platforms of entertainment and watching one episode per week and digesting that episode imagine that you could witness your life like that in just one week and see it and e assess the things that you were doing and start taking messages from your own self and stay and start projecting the things that you want to do in the next week that would be a lot of time that you will save in distractions that you will save in engaging with toxic people or to go to places that you shouldn't even visit because you are going to lose time and you are going to engage with um, negativity and those things so the more we do this reflection, the easier our lives will become. There are benefits of being more aware, more than the ones that I already um, enlisted. Just consider a study of commuters in the United Kingdom in which it was found that commuters who use their ride home to deliberately reflect on how their day went were happier more productive than those who didn't so make the space to reflect and this is something that nowadays is so typical to see in any kind of uh, transportation people are just immersed in their own devices but sadly many times they are just either replying to messages or scrolling in social media it is very very uh, strange to see someone reading to see someone listening to an audiobook or a podcast that is going to give you more information and engaging in things that you can improve and make your mind a growth mindset staying open to learning goes hand in hand with having a space to think while reflection is often a way of learning about yourself you also need to create a space for learning by adopting the right mindset, one that is receptive to growth and development. Generally speaking, everyone has one of two mindsets, either a fixed mindset where you believe learning stops at some point since the brain can only hold a fixed amount of information, or you have a growth mindset where you believe you can always learn more or you can always expand your brain. The fixed mindset though has been scientifically debunked. Neuroscientist Dr. Michael Mersenich has shown that our brains are all soft wire and capable of neuroplasticity. The more you engage with content that is going to make yourself think and grow and acquire abilities and reflect also the more you rewire or reshape your brain in other words your brain is always changing based on the input you provided so engaging with toxic stimuli like news or social platforms is like eating junk food for your brain the more you engage with this kind of toxicity 
the more your brain will be in the lower fixed mindset. That's why many people are in that loop, eternal loop, that seems, that they are just uh, depressed, anxious, frustrated, or having low self-esteem. Because if you engage, the more you engage with that content, the more you are going to be in the reactive mode. The more you detach from that content, the more you start growing and looking for spaces to reflect. This means that a healthy brain is always capable of learning, allowing us to grow and change to overcome our fears. Take the fear of failure, for example. In one study in 2015, one third of all Americans reported that they fear failure, with millennials being the most susceptible. But as widespread as fear of failure is, there is a straightforward way to deal with it. Incorporating failure into a growth mindset and accepting it as a learning opportunity is what will give you more uh, power over that fear. Incorporating new techniques and learning opportunities instead of thinking about that uh, failure. One of the author's clients, Rachel, work for a global snack company. Rachel had such deep-seated fear of failure that she was prone to what's known of catastrophic thinking. She believed that if she made the slightest mistake, everything would fall apart and she would end up destitute. So the more we are letting fear project the negative scenario, the more we are attracting that to us. The author worked with Rachel for weeks, providing a space for her to reflect on the source of her fears, so she could start learning to think differently. Together they discovered that her fear of failure stemmed from her mother, who had been unemployed and homeless for some time. As a result of witnessing those examples, Rachel had the unconscious fear that any mistake or even asking for help could cause her to end up like her mother. Over time, Rachel learned to think differently and eventually came to see that asking for help isn't a sign of failure. It's more a sign of courage. It's more more a sign of having confidence in yourself that some things you can handle and some of them you need help so that you can also learn from other people's experience. So that's why whenever we have these reflection spaces, we are more prone to see our lives as a mapping game that we can start assigning the pieces and uh, creating the pathways to where we want to go, not to where the media or the noise is leading to. So I hope that these reflections and these um, highlighting the power of reflection helps you in your life and today you create some space to reflect either right now or at night or whatever the time it is for you, but have some time for you. Your life will be more productive instead of busy. That's the major um, asset of reflecting upon your life. Thank you very much for paying attention. If you like these messages, if you like these episodes, they are short. You can share them with anyone. You can also listen them in the link below where it says podcast you can always also subscribe to the podcast and give me an evaluation or assessment of the podcast and also you can subscribe to my channel so that you can have more videos more content and start growing and expanding your mind thank you very much for your attention have a wonderful wednesday afternoon and rest of the week we will listen to each other on our next week. Bye.